This session is based on the science of reading that and is supported by researchers such as these. And, and I'm going to start with Dr. Mark Seidenberg. Dr. Mark Seidenberg wrote this great book back in 2017. I have it right here with me, Language at the Speed of Sight. And Dr. Mark Seidenberg uh, gives us a model for understanding how reading arises in the brain, and he calls it the eternal triangle. And I love the eternal triangle because I love triangles. There are three processing areas that he talks about. Some people talk about four processing areas coming together, but we are going to use three, three processing areas, the eternal triangle. Once again, you teachers wire these areas together. They are dispersed in our brains and they are the semantic processing area, the phonological processing area, and the orthographic processing area. And those are the fancy terms. I like to think of them in terms of semantic being meaning, phonological being sound, and orthographic being spelling. Meaning, sound, and spelling. Meaning, sound, and spelling. What is it, everybody? Meaning, sound, and spelling. So if you're a kindergarten teacher or a first grade teacher and you're hitting on meaning, sound, and spelling, uh, if you're a third grade teacher or a fifth grade teacher working with a student who has a learning difficulty uh, or a uh, reading difficulty, I should say, and you're hitting on meaning, sound, and spelling, then you're definitely on the right track. Meaning, sound, and spelling coming together in the reading brain to give rise to reading. Let me just be clear about what I'm talking about. A sound-based activity that you might do in the classroom might be something like hands together, apart, and then away. Taking hands, up, putting them together, apart, and away using compound words to show students that sounds come together in words or words are made up of blocks of sounds. And compound words are a nice thing to use because they're easily understood by students. So I might say to my students, the word is sunrise. What's the word, everyone? Sunrise. Let's break it apart. Sun rise, put it back together, sunrise, one more time, sun, rise, sunrise. That's hands together, apart, back together, and now away. If this is sunrise, what word is this, everyone? That's right, it's sun. If this is sunrise, what word is this, everyone? That's right, it's rise, sunrise. This is a sound-based activity. No written letters, no written words, strictly sound, strictly phonological. When we put together the phonological and semantic areas together, we can consider that, consider that to be a language pathway. It's a very basic rendition of a language pathway. There's more to language than just sound and meaning. There's pragmatics and syntax and sound production and being able to hear all of that kind of stuff. But for our purposes, we'll consider semantic, phonological, meaning and sound coming together to form language. This pathway is a very old pathway. It really is wiring itself. It wires naturally in the brain of human beings. Uh, and this is because it's been around for a long time. It's a very old pathway. Still, even though it wires itself, we can do things in the classroom that strengthen this language pathway, these two areas of the eternal triangle. And an activity that you might do in your classroom that you might be very um, skillful at is an interactive read aloud, a great activity to do. Promotes language comprehension, it builds language, you talk about vocabulary, you ask deep and rich questions, children answer you, you build on that using language, language, language. So the interactive read aloud, what a great thing to do in a classroom. The third piece of the puzzle and very um, important to reading is the orthographic processing area or the spelling area, the word form area where words come together uh, and are processed and then stored. Uh, I don't want us to think of orthography in terms of just spelling like a spelling list or a spelling quiz. It's more rich and nuanced than that. So let me break it apart for you. Orthography, the ortho means straight, true, and correct. So in your uh, bones, if you get orthopedic work done, you're straightening, correcting your bones. There's orthodontic work, straightening your teeth. 
orthodox religion, the straight, true, correct version of a religion according to the people who practice it. Graphy or graph we might think of in terms of math, like a line graph or a pie graph, but let's broaden that definition to think of it as recording of. So if we record our life in words, it's a biography. If it's our own life, uh, if we're writing about our own life, it's an autobiography. If we're recording with photons, it's photography and on and on and on. So orthography, what is that? Here's a nice definition of it. The recording of the correct letter sequences of words. It begins like this in our brain, our reading brain. Sounds are mapped with letters. This is the orthographic mapping that takes place sounds and letters come together then we might get blends and word chunks then we put those together to form whole words and pretty soon we are storing whole words words whole words in our um in our brain reading area and this is what mark seidenberg calls reading you know uh language at the speed of sight we're reading by sight we want every word to become a sight word instantly automatically recognized, automatic word recognition. And the first thing that we do is that we look at the letter sequence of a word, our visual system kicks in and we recognize it as a word. Our brain says, yes, I know that word. And then very quickly, almost instantaneously, it's connected to meaning and we hear the word in our head meaning, sound, and spelling. But the very first thing that happens is the visual aspect and the spelling aspect of the word. And I'll prove it to you. I'm gonna flash a word on the screen here and teachers notice how quickly your brain recognizes this correct spelling and says, oh, I know this word. And you hear the word in your head and you know its meaning. Here comes the word. Did it happen like that? Your brain looked at that little word there and said, oh, I know what that word is because it's correctly spelled, it's stored in your orthographic processing area, it's connected to meaning, it's connected to sound, just like in a brain dictionary, just like a dictionary, right? The correct letter sequence, the correct spelling is first, then you get the pronunciation, and then you get the definition. And you can talk to your students about the dictionary in their brain and how we want to build that dictionary so it's full of English language words that we instantly recognize, we automatically recognize, automatic word recognition. So critical, important, foundational to the reading process. The orthographic system is super important because it comes uh, into play with how we read. There are two reading pathways in our brains. One is the whole word or the lexical. That's what lexical is all about. Lexia, lexicon, lexical, dyslexia. It's all about whole words or lack of fluency thereof. So we, we in, this, in this first pathway, we see the word, we instantly recognize it as a whole word, we know exactly what it means, and we just boom, 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 very fluently read words in this first pathway. The second pathway, we have to slow down, we don't automatically recognize the word, and therefore we have to break it apart, chunk it out, sound it out, decode it, whatever you wanna call it, and then we recognize it as a whole word, and then we understand its meaning, if we, in fact we do know its meaning. This is a slower reading um, pathway. Kindergarten students use this pathway a lot. First graders use this pathway a lot. And students who have a difficult time with automatic word recognition use this pathway a lot. It slows them down when you're in third or fifth grade.